community. It's a great day. My name is Sheila Hardy, and I'm the founder and CEO of Because It's Personal, Inc. And here with me is my co-host, Erica Scott of Life Changers, Inc. And this is the Community Nonprofit Network Podcast, a.k.a. CNN. Our motto is, where your nonprofit shines. Erica, how are you doing today? I am wonderful, Sheila. Thank you for the warm introduction. How are you? I am doing great. Thank you. Um, what's our topic for today? Today, we are talking about how to network like a pro for your nonprofit. All right. That sounds really, really great. Okay. Well, first and foremost, you know, I know that when you're doing that, we start off knowing what you need for your vision. So looking at organizations that has similar goals and visions, like, I don't know, you know, a whole bunch of organizations and foundations, what would you suggest, Erica? The first step I would suggest after the vision and mission statement are down on paper, business plan, whatever you want to, you know, stick it on your mirror, is to find other organizations starting locally in your zip code, if at all possible, and um, look for organizations that whose vision and mission statements are very similar to your own, um, where you overlap and where you may be able to uh, complement what they do and vice versa. So like Cobb Collaborative with Irene, how you and I got hooked up together um, is a perfect example. She is just that professional networker. I know somebody who's doing something like what you're doing. And um, next thing you know, we're introduced in an email and the rest is history, right? So um, organizations like the Cobb Collaborative is one. There is one organization that is nationwide, although I don't know if they are connected, but they are community foundations. And so like, What you would do to find a community foundation is you start in your city. Um, I'm in Powder Springs. So the first thing I did was uh, Google Powder Springs Community Foundation. There were none. So then I went to my county, and that's where I found Cobb County, just might be Cobb Community Foundation. And that's where I met Miss Cat. So shout out to Irene with the collaborative and Miss Cat with uh, the Cobb Community Foundation. And what these, Irene with the collaborative is more so for networking. So she is definitely uh, a great hub for that and is really what we're talking about today. The foundation, though, is where you can also find awesome networking opportunities, um, but you find board members. um, They don't take community service workers like I do. So a lot of community service workers come from them to me. And um, they're your volunteers. So these are still hubs that you want to plug into. That sounds great. That's awesome. Well, let's talk about um, connecting through virtual networking. What do you think about that? Is that really a good way to start? Or what do you, what's your thoughts on virtual networking? Virtual networking, um, again, you find organizations that you need to link up with. Okay, because they have other organizations who do, you know, are in the same space as you. Whatever events they have, and especially, you know, in the midst of COVID, which will pretty much date this episode, but it is what it is. um, You have a lot, you still have a lot of organizations offering virtual only um, networking opportunities. Grab it. Have you and I ever met? Nope, sure haven't. But that doesn't stop us from being on the phone for, what, two, three, four hours at a time, you know, talking chop and, um, you know, mixing in with the word and, and networking opportunities coming up. And how did it go with that last one? So virtual versus in person. I mean, for me, the only big difference is you can't swap business cards. Um, some people do need to see face to face and some people are just zoomed out, but I still think the, Vast majority of people, you know, nonprofit or for profit, will still see value in video conferencing simply because either you're going to say what you're going to say or you're not. You're, you, you know what you know or you don't. 
and it's um, going to come through either way, especially if you're doing video conferencing and not just a phone call. Awesome. Well, what do you think about emailing? What do you think about that? Emailing, I think, is an underutilized tool, and it is especially uh, awesome for people who a lot of nonprofits, you know, a lot of us are like what we call grassroots organizations, you know, boots on the ground, and we don't have these massive budgets to, you know, like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. We're starting with, you know, a laptop or even a, a just a phone and a phone directory of some sort, you know, Google or um, some kind of list of from some free source. So um, email with the functionality, scheduling emails, um, temp, making templates so you're not taking time and even having to think about how to respond. Um, if you're sending out mass emails like we just did, like 30-something emails from a networking event that you went to, um, you make a template and you send, you plug their name in and you make the same, and it may sound, oh, well, that's kind of cheesy. That's not personal. Yeah, it is. It is because, you know, you start doing something over and over, you get sloppy and, um, you don't want to be sloppy. You want to take your time, do it once and get it in template. You know, don't work harder, work smarter. That's a duh moment. So email is underutilized. Um, and then if you, you know, I won't get techie on you because I know how you get. <laughs> but, you got some people that are, are techie like you and but they can get they need more information concerning about how that to utilize that um the emails um, well so go for it yeah well i'm, I'm not going to get too deep into it we'll save that for a techie episode how's that when we okay. bring somebody else in on, okay so in this one i'll just say in regards to email there, uh, when you do something like automated, um, you can use a free account with like MailChimp and it will, you know, you can set up your email and then when someone so logs, uh, signs in to, you know, subscribe to receive emails from you, you have automated email that goes back to them and you, it, it can contain, it can contain your calendar. It can contain, you know, for a 15-minute chat or 30-minute chat or whatever. It's the same, same thing that coaches use. But uh, email is definitely a time saver because, look at, you know, especially when you first get on the phone with somebody, you may spend 20, 30, 40 minutes, you know, trying to develop an intimate, not just a, hey, my name is this, this is my organization, I do this, what can you do for me or what can I do for you? You know, you want to know somebody you want to do a little you know go a little deeper so email you know hey i pray all is well with you um this is what i do you might send them a link to your website and if this is something that you might be interested in please um you know i could be reached at one two three four five six seven eight you know whatever phone number <laughs> yeah. so that that's why email is really a, a great um it's a high roi tool um, in sales, but it's a, a high ROI tool in time with networking because it does save you that time. It gets your point across and you can put in whatever little tidbits, flyers, email, um, I mean, uh, website addresses, you know, a video of a function or a workshop or whatever program, you know, a little snippet. You, have, you There's a lot of ways to utilize it. And so, especially if you're new to this and you are starting maybe just one or two of you definitely get on YouTube, learn how to use some email, contact me. I would be more than happy to, you know, just have some patience because it goes a lot deeper than what I'm saying now. That's correct. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Cause I know. Um, yeah. Now what do you think about texting? I, Texting is a great tool. Don't get me wrong. I just don't do it. I don't I don't use it. Um, but texting can be great simply because you have even less. It can be great as long as you understand and respect the boundaries, the invisible boundaries of texting. And that is just because you can make it as long as you want, don't make it as long as you want. That's a quick. This is Erica Scott. We met yesterday at the ABC networking event. Uh, I was really interested in what you were saying. I'd like to connect with you deeper. 
please call me at this number or you can email me and, you know, maybe, you know, you here's my website in case you want to see more of what I'm doing before you call me. Done. You're done. And you leave it at that. You don't have someone reading some, you know, biography or some mini essay on their, you know, text device. So, yeah, I, I don't know. It's I'm with the email because there's times when I get my text right away. And I will I will see that right away. Whereas with the email, <laughs> there's times when I don't go straight to my emails all the time. So I don't know. Texting for me is really for me is good. However, when I want to do something more professional, then I go through the email. But uh, yeah, that's great. That's wonderful. I know um, going into um, to meetings or events. In person, I like that because you get a chance to feel the vibes of other people. Um, it's where, you know, you get a chance to to see the person, really look face-to-face. Right. And um, I really like that because, and it's difficult now, we understand that. We know what's going on, but you got to roll with the punches. Right. But, um, yeah, now we have, a, a, it seems like another hit with uh the pan- I don't want to say the pandemic is starting all over again but now they're seeing surges of this virus again. Wow. So it's like okay, mm. do we wear the mask again? Do we get shot again? Uh, of course with the virus. <laughs> not not with guns, but the virus. And I it's like, like you know, and it's not to be it's not to make light of what's going on these yeah. days, but the way you said that, it's like I I'm I'm about to say that's why you need to stay away from the news. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it, it's difficult to do that. But you got, but it's interesting because they're saying, okay, now uh, because we know how it spread it before. Right. That's interesting. We know that's almost like you know telling a lie and it just going across the world. You know, yeah. So, so it comes down to, um, you know, this is going to be almost like a norm when it comes down to. Uh, um, video conferencing, right? Uh, that's going to be it's going to be close to a norm now, I believe. Right. And um, and also it's really good when it comes down to uh, um, you know saving on gas. You know what? How much gas is? Well, uh, no, I don't. For, <laughs> I, I heard those, it's kind of scary though. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, I, it's, I, I you no, kind of want to pull your your mask up to your eyes uh, before you start pumping, so you. No, have a panic attack at the pump. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. And and what's happening is is that, you know, four to, over four dollars a gallon, that's no joke. That I I, I never dreamed that <laughs> we would see something like this. However, wow. however, um we still can we still can get through this. But you know, being able to work at home is a luxury. Yes. Yes. It really is. It's a luxury. And having these meetings is a luxury. Let me ask you this. It just came through my head. You know, I've noticed that when we do have these video conferences, that sometimes will, people will come in and they won't <laughs> they won't show their face. They won't put the camera on. Right. And it's like, is that is that a, a good thing or is that a bad thing? Or and- it doesn't matter. <laughs> At uh, first, I was um. To, <laughs> okay, something really. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Cause, cause, you know, sometimes I can just shoot a thousand miles and a second out to left field. To uh, me, it it's almost at first when I first started getting on Zoom, it almost seemed like if we're standing there having a conversation, you turned your back on me. That's how I took it. Like. That's rude, but but then I I understand you know like you said this is a norm people are doing it more and more so some people don't you know they won't show themselves if they're not dolled up so it's kind of like okay you know I understand you're on an hour long meeting I don't want you to waste your makeup either you know I don't want you to have to do your hair or whatever whatever for this meeting because it it really isn't that serious but some people are just really that way where they are not going to be seen in public on video or whatever, they won't even answer the door for a delivery person if they're not, you know, 
cosmopolitan cover ready. So that's a personal thing for them. I don't take it personally. I used to almost get offended, but like, okay, that that's kind of rude. You know, everybody else showing their face. What's, but cause I mean, my first Zoom literally was two days after my eye surgery. So I look like I got jacked up in a back alley somewhere, you know, <laughs> black and blue everywhere. But I'm still, you know, hey, here I am. Um, so, yeah. Right. That Now, that's interesting because, you know, even talking about the etiquette of it, we didn't know the rules. Right. We didn't know the rules. Right. But I, I totally agree. What my pet peeve is, is when... <laughs> Okay. Here you go. Uh, I'm, I don't think I'm gonna say it, but but when I started off, uh, I had a pet peeve because it's like, okay, wait a minute, aren't we supposed to be professional? Aren't we supposed to? Until we start hearing about, you know, people was dressed up in the, you know, the top where you can see them, <laughs> and then at the bottom they had some underwear on or something like that. <laughs> So it's like, oh, okay. And I, don't I stand, think it was called don't, Zoom. What was it called? Zoom attire or something like that? I don't know, but don't stand up. That's <laughs> all I got to say. Or, uh, don't stand up. So it, I remember like last week I was on a Zoom meeting and the person that was giving the presentation and everything, I was on, there was about nine, I think. I want to say nine. Don't quote me. And, um, I was the only one that showed my face. Everybody oh, wow. else was like, you know, the mic was off, the camera was off, and I was like, man. You said okay. the mic was off too? Oh, and you mean because it, it was okay? Okay, I got you. Yeah, the mic was off, and then the camera was off, and I can understand the mic off because you know you don't want the background right. noise. And I, I get that. I get that. But um, yeah, nobody knew the rules. So it was almost like you were making up the rules as it as you go. So you I, all might I as well it. just been on a phone conference call. Yeah, well, uh, I, I all I know is, would you do what you're doing if the president of the United States was on a Zoom meeting? What would you? How would you? How would you respond? Or how would you act? So that's just me. Yeah, I mean, me personally, I'm. Honestly, I am who I am. <laughs> I do what I do and how I do it is either going to be acceptable or, you know, kick me out of Zoom meeting. But I'm not, um, like I said, I know some people are just that, I guess the only word I can think of is like vain. You know, they have to look. I said, no hair out of place. No, you know, where some of us and I'm, hey, hey, I'm here <laughs> and I'll show yeah. my face, you know. Um mm-hmm. Respectfully so, but I mean it, it's a Zoom meeting. It's it's a Zoom uh, meeting. Yeah, they had it's a, a meeting. It's a meeting. I understand it's business, but at the same time, we are now. Let's remember, we are talking about nonprofits, so we're not talking about a uh, bankers meeting. And after, actually, after Jamie Dimon of J.P. Morgan Chase went on an interview in jeans, I was like, oh, that's a game changer. So yeah, I can I can show up to a Zoom meeting for nonprofits in a sweatshirt. I'm yeah, good. it just depends. It just it just it depends on who it right. is and the timing of it. I get it. Right. I get it because I don't I don't know if I could do a, a game changer. I don't know if I can do that. But in person to me is is much much better. And I think that with with anybody. Um, but again, when you can't do it and it's in the, on the Zoom, um, okay, go for it or video conference, I should say, because Zoom is not the only one. Of course. I was started. just about to say that. Yeah. 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 So I get it. So I'm going to start saying video conferencing. Okay. Um, another thing uh, in person is uh, exchange your business cards. Right. Uh, which is really, really great. Um, business cards to me is really good. Now, but then I've been hearing other people say, oh, no, don't, you know, don't do business cards. Well, then how do you, how, how's the person going to know or remember you, you know? So what did they say? uh, Who was it? Um, The business cards was like, uh, no, this was on uh, YouTube where they're saying they it it was. uh, What do you call it? It was like an advertisement where they're saying, well, you don't have to give give out business cards anymore, whatever. All you have to do is just give your information of your phone number. And, And I'm thinking your business cards 
your your phone number is on your business card. That makes no sense. And then I I didn't listen to the rest of it, so I'm I apologize. I didn't get the whole thing. No, that's but okay. I, 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 I don't think I would have either. Yeah, because the point of the business cards, because I have a whole bunch of business cards, and I go through them every once in a while, and it's like, ah, okay, I'm glad I got this person. Right, right. So, yeah, so I, I don't know. I don't know what the heck they were talking about. Well, but I, anyway. I, I know. I, I to, to pause you right there, me personally, if they're saying that, because some people may think this is an okay idea and not to get business cards, if they're saying that it's okay to – just get somebody's name and number, put it in your phone right then. I wouldn't suggest that because how do you remember? Now you have to remember everybody unless you have a phone. And I'm, I'm a Samsung user, so excuse me. Unless your phone can tell you the date, you know, so you can say, oh, what, what date was that? Oh, okay, that was the third, right? The third that you went to the network. Okay, and then you can pull up everybody. If it can't do that, you need a business card. I'm sorry, you just need a business card. So we suggest business cards, which is we do. And on that note, because this is only our second episode, right? We're getting there. Um, But we are also um, wanting to share resources because, again, we we know we may be appealing to people who are brand new, not just to nonprofits, but to business, period. That may be coming from, you know, behind a desk somewhere where they didn't need business owner hats you know and we do wear a lot of hats so on that note i want to say one we were talking about video conferencing zoom is not the only one we know not a lot of nonprofits, like i said earlier are on a thin budget and um so we now use we now use google meet right how so cool that, is that <laughs> how, how cool is that i just started Super i just easy. started doing google meet what three weeks ago not even, Not even a month. Two weeks. Yeah. And it's yeah. very easy. So very. if you haven't done Google Meet, go for it. Play with it. And I know you didn't trust me because I am techie. And I know you're probably saying, okay, that's what she says. <laughs> what yeah, I kept no. saying, it's easy. It's easy. Yeah, okay. No. That's what she says. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> but it's okay because I'm learning how to trust you. That's another thing. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's another thing. Trust. <laughs> yes. I'm yeah. Well, well, we're going to get to that. I, huh? We're going to get to I, that. Yeah, I'm learning. Okay, yeah, so yeah. Um, the next one is uh, elevator pitch, meaning that do you have a summary of what your vision and your mission statement is all about? And I'm going to just be honest. Uh, um, I have to practice that. Uh, I have – I don't want to say I have a fear, but I don't know what else to say. I just – I'm learning and I'm practicing how to present myself in uh, uh, in a way that – People will say, you know what, I I like to hear more. So you really have to practice, and that's what I'm doing. So let's see. Uh, do you have a, a elevator pitch? I'm sure you do. I do, I do. And and I, I let me just expound on what you just said. An elevator pitch, just to give a visual to those listening because they're listening. An elevator pitch is simply that. Imagine you're going from the ground level of a building to say the fifth floor in an elevator, 30 seconds, you know, 30 second elevator pitch. So how would you explain your organization, agency, business in a nutshell in those 30 seconds? That is what's defined as your elevator pitch. So my elevator pitch is Life Changers is a prison reentry program, and we focus on the aspect of the workforce helping ex-offenders and felons and at-risk youth become employable by teaching them skills, resume writing skills, job application skills, prep for the interview skills. And that is in an effort to help them locate and secure gainful employment. Oh, yeah. You've been practicing or you just... You You know, and I can go on and on. (laughs) I can go on and on with, you know, but it's, but that's the, that's the, core of it helping them become you know gainfully employed yeah it gets to straight to the point right so yeah that's awesome that is really awesome well our next our next question is when is it too soon to do a follow-up especially if you were in person um when is it when is it too soon to do a follow-up to connect with people 
Well, is that in person only or virtual too? So we just met uh, yesterday. Both. When's it too soon to to follow up with them? Yeah, both. Yeah, anytime. Both. Okay. What do you say? Well, um, I say that the the same day. No, no, not the same day. Um, but the next day, I think it's really good. I had an experience where I was in a meeting. Actually, this was. I want to say it was last week. If it wasn't last week, it was the week before last. And the person said, I want to get in contact with you. And I'm like, oh, okay, this is good. Because, you know, we had the meeting. They recorded the meeting. And I was expecting to hear from them with the recording at least within three days. I have not heard a thing. (laughs) <laughs> so it's like okay this this is not good um and i expected that so the you know when is it too soon to me it's never too soon i mean at, you know right after a day after or a couple of days after to me to me that's just etiquette that's right. just me right. um i don't know about anybody else but i would like to it would I, I think anybody would like to you know say you know what I'm so glad they got back to me uh, that quick. That's right. really great. I, right. that, you know, but I I have not heard from them. So, of course, when you're doing something like this, um, the nonprofit, you got a lot on your mind. You got a lot to do. Yes. And then all of a sudden you start thinking, wait a minute, what happened to that meeting that I was in? I haven't heard anything from right. these people. Right. And now I'm kind of leery because – What's going on? What? Why haven't I heard from these yeah. people? So, yeah, that's that's something that, I, you know, you can think about. But um, we're actually right now. Can we, I throw in a tip real quick, though, about that uh, to yeah. help people? Um, and I'm and, and throwing it in now because I may forget by the time we come back around to it. Gotcha. Um, but organization. And, uh, again, a lot of people come out of, you know, jobs. And they don't have to have that kind. They're not. They don't have meetings in that job they were in or or are still on. And so one thing I'll say is there there are tools, free tools that you can use, especially if you're using Google. Yes, use Google Meet. But Google also has an awesome calendar with excellent functions. You can do your events and your tasks and um, uh, set reminders. You could set ongoing, forever. You know, repeat events. Um, Every Friday at 7, you know this, I have an intern update meeting. It's set in stone unless, you know, it, it's changed by them. This helps to organize you, but the, the key I wanted to also add, like an extra asterisk, is enable this kind of tool on your phone. So when you are, or your tablet, whatever you carry with you to these networking events, so that you can, you're not like trying to remember it when you get home and finally, you know, rest and eat and catch up on uh, voicemails and, and catch up on your own emails. You can do it as you go along. Um, just putting in names with notes because it lets you put notes. Um, like, oh, Sheila Hardy, because it's personal, get her videotape, you know, boom. And so now you go back. Don't, hey, you will never, you will look like really sloppy. That's the only word I can think of. If you try to keep all of this in your head and not utilize the tools that are readily and freely, literally free to use. Um, any Everybody and anybody uses Google. So to talk to anybody about how to get things automated, um, like with our podcast guests, you know, I, it, it took me a minute, <laughs> but. I finally figured out how to get it automated. Click here and then boom, boom, boom. And then by the time you're done um, with your, you know, flow, you're set up as a guest on this date. This time we're going to record. We'll call you five minutes ahead of time, you know. So now um, another tool that I would like to uh, share is a big shout out to Ashley with Greater ATL Web Design. And um, she is, if you're listening to this podcast, It is because Ashley got it in front of you. Whatever platform you're on, Ashley is a, she is great at marketing and uh, at just overall online marketing, digital marketing. 
Every nonprofit needs this. Why? You need digital marketing if you want volunteers, if you have a program that you want to be known. I personally have, uh, not personally, but Life Changers, we have the four-hour workforce readiness workshop. And that's where we teach them how to write their resume, fill out the job application. Well, if I want this out there to get registrants, then I need to market. Marketing simply means getting you known. Well, if you don't know how to do this, you don't have time to do it because Lord knows we wear so many hats, then you hire somebody like Ashley. Um, Ashley, I, I can't give you a quote, but I'll tell you this. If you contact Ashley and before you even talk shop, say, hey, I want the CNN podcast discount. <laughs> and uh, because if you don't say that first, she's not going to give it to you. I'm just being completely honest. That's how it works. And um, but yes, if, if you have a Facebook page, she is a bad mama jamma. If you have uh, whatever you have, she'll make your flyers, your your ads, graphics, you name it, she'll do it. To contact her, you can reach out to us on our website, the CNN podcast. Dot com. Go to either advertise with us or contact us, and her information is on both right. pages. Mm -hmm. I, I, I will do that, guys. I will contact her. She's good. I know. Um, I told. <laughs> I know. You've heard me talking about Ashley because she was actually working with Life Changers first. And, but it wasn't until you saw that ad that she created <laughs> that you were like, Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I see why you're tooting her. Whole yeah, yeah. She's good. She's really good. She's really good. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's, I mean, she's good, guys. And we would not steer you wrong. Um, no. You know, we just wouldn't do that. And it's all about, it's all about being truthful with each other because right. if she wasn't, if she wasn't <laughs> the way she is, uh, we would not put her name out there. We would not be shouting out to her. Bottom I, line, um, so yeah, mm -hmm. I, I rec I, she's working with my daughter now because I turned my daughter on to her. That's it. There you go. And and the bottom line is, again, being professional. Right. And you want somebody's you want somebody professional. Right. You want somebody that you can. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna get into that the trust thing and the professional right. thing. Yes. So so right now our segment that we what we're gonna be talking about is what would you do? Um, too bad what I don't have. You do? I don't I, I I don't have any music to say. Dun, 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 dun. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> so what would you do? And so here it goes, guys. Number one question. Um, and I have about three or four questions. Okay. Number one. What do you do when the person you reach out to does not respond within a day or two? So what would you do? And ask yourself in your mind, well, what would you do? So, Erica, what would you do? <laughs> well, I have a three-strike rule, and that is if I email you, if I call you, and or uh, leave you uh, a, a, or text you, and I don't do text, um, and you don't respond, next. Like Jay-Z says, on to the next, on, on to the next one. Well, there you go. Okay. Um, I, I take that, too. That's a good rule. That's a good rule because again, time is very sensitive. Yes. Good, 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 good. Okay, next one. So you connect with someone at the event. Let's say we saw someone in person, and however, they don't follow through with their promises. For example, if they you you've talked to them and they say, well, um, we'll check on this information or we'll do this for you and they never get back to you what would you do um and you're and this is like at uh, we're teaming up to do like you and i are teaming up and and you say okay well i'll get the information for that and you'd never do yeah that um falls under yeah. the same guidelines uh you know three strike it would have to be it would have to, first of all, if you can't do it, let me know. You're not, if you're not, if you know, you're not going to be able to do it, you know, and, and I know we're easing on into that trust, but you know, you're not going to be able to do it. Just send me a text. Cause honestly, to me, a lot of people use texts as like a chicken way out of things. So, and that's fine. Um, but just 
show that much respect to let me know it's not going to happen. However you want to, you know, express that, it's just not going to happen. Right. That's good. All right. And the next one is, <laughs> this is kind of weird. Um, if you had all the money in the world, okay, all the money in the world for one hour, what would you do? Now, that's really off, but what would you do if you had <laughs> all the money in the world for one hour? What would you do? Well, that that's a lot like Brewster's Millions, right? And and I know some, some people yeah, may right. not even know what I'm talking about. But no, I don't. <laughs> oh, really? I don't. Oh, okay. Well, no, no, no. no. Um, I would uh, personally, I would be <laughs> sitting down with my attorney, and we would be making out a lot of trust fund um, agreements. You know, uh, I'm just going to list them and say them out loud so that I can share the recording of that meeting to everyone while he's getting it prepared. So someone, one of my people can dot the I's and cross the T's. No, no, no. She didn't say that. She said this one. Um, but yeah, my family, friends, um, segments of our society like ex offenders, um, like teen moms, like, um, uh, or, you know, even grandmothers who are now raising their grandkids because their, you know, kid is caught up in the penal. So, you know, I'm I'm always going to come back to that. But, yeah, so that's what I would be doing. Mm. Okay. I've already told you what I would do, but you, you went, you went far and beyond. <laughs> it's like, how you going to do that? <laughs> I just said, I just said, um, I just buy up all the banks. But, um, you know, it's my dream. Hey. Uh, right. I buy up all the, the banks. I own all the, I would own all, all the banks. Don't ask me how. It's my dream. And, uh, <laughs> and then when I, when I, because I own all the banks, um, I would make things affordable for people. Excellent. Excellent. Because if it's affordable, see, I don't get it because we have in schools economic classes, right? Right. And so with that being said, you have people, you have young people that have gone to school, had got a degree in economics. Right. My question is, how come this is not working? <laughs> I know how why it's not working, but I it, the point of it is, is, is like, it, it, this makes no sense. Some of this, mm. some of this stuff is so easy, it's scary. Okay. Right. Um, you know, when we talk about, um, People don't have enough money or whatever. Well, why don't we raise the minimum wage from right. seven twenty five? You hear me? You hear me, everybody? In Georgia, the minimum wage is seven twenty five. Mm. Uh, yeah. Okay. Mm. Uh, how come that hasn't changed? So if we just have at least uh, fifteen dollars an hour. Let's say twenty dollars an hour. Uh, you might not have to, you know, try to help other people get certain things. Can okay. I share something with you? Go ahead. Twenty dollars an hour at a forty-hour job, forty-hour a week job is only eight hundred dollars. That doesn't even qualify you for a three thousand dollar a month rent, um, apartment. So, uh, because at eight hundred dollars, uh, at three thousand dollars. A month, right? And okay, well, that well, that would be more like a house. So an apartment right now is running like nineteen hundred, two thousand dollars a month. Okay, you got to make three times, right? Six thousand dollars a month. Eight hundred dollars. <laughs> Eight hundred and six are not. They're not even in the same sport, let alone the same ballpark. So yeah, it's it's. I think it's a seesaw where expenses need to come down. And yes, you're right. Minimum, we are so way overdue, you know, for a, a raise in the minimum. It's ridiculous. And these companies need to come up, I, I, hey, at the risk of oh, who's going to do what to me, I don't know, but come up off of their high horse because a lot of these corporations that, well, no, we need to make this much. And in order to make this much, we can only pay this much. Well, you're this much and that this much need to make a compromise. 
you know, so you can't make a billion dollar profit this year. Can, can, can you live with, you know, 750, 750 million? Really? You know, can we do that? So, but the government, you know, we're not going to go there. We're not going to go there. Because, yeah, if you're right. It is simple. It is. It's very simple. It is very simple. Um, yeah, we're we going we gonna to go there because oh, we're going okay. to keep it real because okay. that's what it's all about. We, we got to keep it real to let people know that, you know what, these people that are supposed to be representing us. Right. They get they get money. How come, you know, again, it needs to be raised seven dollars and twenty five cents. <laughs> is not good. No. Bottom line. So we, we're we telling everybody to vote. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> vote. Come on. Vote. Or run. Hey, Erica, don't you want to run? You run know what? You're the second person in two years to tell me that. And okay, no, well, I don't because I don't have the I don't have the temperament. God is still where he's not done with me yet. I still have no. a long ways to go. Okay. Well, you know, it's interesting because when you say not having the temperament, Somebody need to get mad. Somebody not that kind of mad. Not that, oh. that I've, I've, you know, I've, I've, you, hey, you I've come a long way, and I, I don't need to, you know, go there. Oh, oh, okay, that's bad. yeah. Oh, okay. It's because right. it, it's because it's ridiculous. It, it makes it, it's just ridiculous. Because see, then I'll have to go into why are uh, kids still dying from childhood diabetes? Because we have to keep sugar smacks on the, you know. On the list of available foods for food stamps, um, don't take me there. This is good. <laughs> it's okay, going to be more than minimum wage. That's my point. Yeah, yeah. I, no, I get you. It's it's it, the system is messed up. But again, we got to realize that the system is messed up, and we got to start changing the system. Right. But you know, I get you. But anyway, I would. And vote that's for you. why all these nonprofits. You know, everyone's coming, you know, it, 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 we all, what? We want a better way, whether we're coming from the uh, aspect of helping animals or helping children or helping, you know, ex-offenders, helping, you know, government systems. It, we all are coming, to, you know, the goal is for a better society for the nonprofits, but it's the for-profits who are for profits, you know, and wanting to secure those profits. That's the, that's the issue. That's the, that's the battle we're fighting. The nonprofits aren't the ones that have the major issue. It's the for profits that we're all having to go against, you know, 1.5 million nonprofits. And a lot of us are in the same realm. We're all, we're fighting the same, you know, over, you and I, we overlap in, in essentially prison reform. You know, reducing the rate of incarceration and recidivism. Okay. And how many are there just in the Cobb County area that do that same thing? So, you know, but it, it's, you know, unfortunately, they're not throwing money at us. Um, you know, the for-profits aren't throwing money at us uh, like they do with politicians because we don't serve their bottom line. We don't, we don't cater to their, you know, profit. I'm sorry. Well, I tell you what. Um, we're keeping it real. We're going to always keep it real. That's just what we do. Right. Okay. Um, when, when teaming up with someone, um, you should what? When you're teaming up with like, okay, with you and I, we're teaming up to, first of all, make our lives a little bit easier. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> because, because you have something that, I want to do with my vision, and since you have something, since you have that vision also, it's where I can just um, have my my participants to just connect with you, right, and go from there, right. And that way, I don't have to deal with that. So, right. this is what we're talking about: teaming up. This is what you need to look for. First of all, you need somebody that you know that is truthful. Yes. That's that's the that's the bottom line. So you can trust them. With that being said, um, it takes time to get to know people. Now there's times when you're going to meet somebody and it's like you've known them for years, and then there's some people that you you think you know them for years, <laughs> or you you have known them for years, and all of a sudden they're not the same person. Right. 
So it, and then you have some people that you've known them for years. They come into your life and then all of a sudden it's like, wait a minute, this is not the same person. What's going on? Right. Um, so it's, it takes time. It takes knowing who you are. And I think we said that before. It takes knowing who you are, knowing what you want to do. And then again, this is your baby. This is where you take care of your baby. This is your vision. It's your baby and your baby. You can't just allow anybody to take your baby or take over your baby. Um, babysit your baby. You just, you just have to do that. <laughs> We're in the midst of COVID. You can't just let anybody touch your baby. <laughs> can't let them touch your baby. Yes, sir. That's it. So you got to really be careful with that. Right. Um, another thing is, and I, we talked about the time sensitive. Um, you got to be really time sensitive. And it's all about organization, organizing. And I, I think we need to go back to one, uh, one-on-one organizing just to make sure we know what that is. Right. And so because this society is all about keeping you busy. We it's know tragic. that because when yes. the pandemic ha- happened, we realized, oh, my gosh, a lot of people rested yeah. and hadn't rested before. Yep. We start seeing things the way they really are and not the way it was presented to us, and we got a chance to see it. Yes. And so with that being said, I have noticed, I don't know if you have noticed this, but I have noticed that because it's been so ingrained in us, I mean, there are some people that say, you know what, I I don't I don't want to be told what to do concerning about, you know, now I'm, I'm really kind of going off, but I'm really coming somewhere, I'm really going somewhere with this. Um, I don't want anybody to tell me what to do. Uh, I, you know, I don't want to wear my mask, blah, blah, blah. Mm. We had that in the beginning. That started that started right. that mess in the beginning. Now, to me, that was like, and, you know, I don't want to hear your emails or anything like that. And if you want to say something, fine. I won't read them. But it's <laughs> like, uh, okay, so apparently you don't care about me because, if it's about it's not about it's not all about you it's about community just like nonprofits is about community right so if i see and i may not agree with people but if i see that it's going to help other people to get where they need to go i'm just going to deal with it i'm right. just going to you know go ahead and say you know what i care about my brothers and sisters i'm you know but i was seeing People like defiant, and it's like, what the heck? So, is some, what is wrong with y'all? <laughs> it's something. So if you begin to start seeing the selfishness, yeah. Okay, respect. I'm right there. It's all about okay. Um, just like if you okay, let's say this. Um, I invite you to dinner, and you're a vegetarian, and I'm a meat eater. Okay. And so I invite you to dinner, and I know you're a vegetarian. You think I'm going to eat meat in front of you? I, I, first of all, I won't. Okay, I won't. I will respect that, you know, okay, she she doesn't eat meat or whatever. And I'm going to respect that because I'm not going to be around you 24-7. I can eat my meat eventually. <laughs> but I'm going to respect, the, you know, I'm going to respect how you feel with that. That's cool. And and so and maybe that's not a good scenario, but well, some people and and somebody might somebody listening might yeah. be like, okay, that's not even really that's it. but that they don't know those vegetarians and vegans they tend, tend to be more like vegans that are adamant about oh like at the sight of meat makes them vomit. Yeah, you know. So yes. no, I understand where you're coming from. Yeah, because I I used to be a I used to be a vegetarian. Actually. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. So I, that's why. I, and and if and if you and if nobody understands that, I'll probably change another scenario. But I'm just, it just came to my head. But uh, uh, again, respect uh, means for me uh, for anybody else. If you tell me something, I expect you to follow through. That's, that's just it. respect. That's it. I respect. I, you know, I I I expect that. If you're gonna tell me something, I expect that you're going to follow through. And if you can't follow through, like you had said before, then 
text me, give me a call, say, you know what, I, I can't do this. Right. I would rather you be, you know, truthful with that than anything else. Um, changes, changes happens. Right. And that's okay. Because we know changes happen. But when changes happen, again, it's going by communication. That's all. That's um, it. And that, that's another, we're going to leave it at that because we have a whole episode on communication. Um, because that is definitely a hot topic that people really need to tune in for. But I agree. Agree. And so with that being said, um, I remember when, um, you were talking about talking to someone and telling them that, you know, you can do certain things for them and you may be saying that you're under promise. Remember? Oh, that? yes. Yeah. Well, that's exactly. my motto. That's my period work motto. Um, when I was an account manager for a Fortune 100 company and our clients were Fortune 500 companies, um, when I've been, you know, over 40 years in customer service overall, and um, my motto has always been under promise and over deliver. So, for example, when I was an account manager, it was a technology company and uh, it was a brand new um, concept. So, you know, you have bugs, brand new. You really have bugs. And uh, with the package would be me saying, okay, here it is, ready for you to test. Time frame was within uh, four weeks. We would have that. That was this time frame, but I would do everything I could to be, and I mean, after me testing and testing, to be able to hand it to them and say, hey, guess what? We actually got done with it in three weeks. You know, so you, here you have, um, you know, you can, uh, here's the information. I've already made up your guide. Um, uh, that was technical writing that I, you know, make their manuals, instructions, and give it to them. That's under pro they thought they were getting it in four weeks, but I gave it to them in three weeks. And, and, and the thing about that is that salesperson, you know how salespeople are. They'll say whatever to get that sale. I actually quit that job because the salesperson wouldn't stick to that four weeks and pushed it to two. Oh, well, no, no, no. Erica's good. She'll have it to you in two weeks. Um, <laughs> by December 28th, I'll be leaving. <laughs> I'll play that. I, integrity. My character is on the line. You know, with these companies who are voluntarily free will writing me, you know, great letters of praise and here you're about to trash. No, not my name, not my name. So, yeah, it's it's under promise and over deliver. Don't say it if you can't do it. And, and what did you say? Um, your word is your bond. You know, if you say it, uh, say what you mean and it has the rest of it go. Say what you mean. And mean what you mean say. What you, that's what it is. You mean what you say. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And and that's the bottom line because you got people that don't do that now. It's it's a doggy yeah. dog world and I'm gonna take and, and everything like that. We gotta get back to what works and what works well. Right. And just like with anything else, I don't um I I'm I'm the type of person that I I I, I, I need to trust you. Right. If I don't I I won't give my all to you. I just mostly I'm more about, hey, I, you know, I say hey or whatever, but I can't, I can't trust my baby with you. That's just, that's just the way I, it is. My tip would be, and, and honestly, this is with either partnering with other nonprofits, your interns, your community service workers, your volunteers, whoever you are giving any, you know, bit of your baby to. Um, you want to trust them with just dabbing off the drool around the mouth. You want to make sure they don't rub a rash on them, you know. But I would say just test them. Test them with something small, you know, on a time frame. You know, well, hey, um, look up some keywords for me or write a couple of ads for me and give them the outline how it's supposed to be done. And I need these in two days. You know, because you've already asked them, and we, you and I have spoken about this. You've already asked them, okay, what kind of schedule are you working on? How many hours are you giving me a week? Blah, 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 blah. So now it's in their court to do this assignment in the time frame that they gave. See what they come up with. Sounds good. Sounds good. So um, right now, I hopefully we've given you some information that you can use. Yes. That's powerful. And uh, we're going to give you more powerful tools to use um, so your nonprofit will just ex explode 
into something that's awesome. And the bottom line is when you do good, we do good because it's for the community. And that's the bottom line of this whole thing. Because yes. I'm going to celebrate you when you get certain things done or whatever. It's for the community. I'm going to celebrate you. Yes. And hopefully you'll celebrate me too. And that's what it's all about. Right. That's for me, I don't know. That's all what it's all about for me. And so if we get that attitude, um, there's nothing that we can't do. Right. Really, it, it's nothing. And then the, our young people are going to see that, and then they're going to – copy what we do right and that's what we want to do we want to copy something that actually never goes wrong that it's almost like a principle when when we take care of each other when we connect with each other and help each other out oh my god it, it gets contagious right and it's a good contagious so right. you know really great it's so, like laughter yeah so sheila i think this is going to be the last episode with just you and I, because we're going to start bringing on guests. So with that being said, if you are listening and you are interested in being a guest on the CNN podcast, then please visit our website and where you see the tab that says be a guest, click there, complete the form. And by the time you finish, you will be scheduled for your interview date with us on air. If you would like to advertise with us, we are giving great intro prices. So please, again, go to our website, thecnnpodcast.com, click advertise, and complete your information. So with that being said, we appreciate you, and we look forward to hearing from you with any questions. If you have any events you'd like us to mention, then please feel free to contact us. Until next time, be awesome and be blessed.